a crucial state for the GOP. And out front now, Donald Trump supporter Jeff Lord, who served as political director to President Ronald Reagan. Ted Cruz supporter Ben Ferguson, hosts the Ben Ferguson Show. Donald Trump supporter Pastor Daryl Scott and Dan Pfeiffer, who served as senior advisor to President Obama. Thanks to all. Pastor Scott, let me start uh, with you. Uh, you know, you see this fight going down in Arizona, this crucial winner-take-all state. But the bottom line here is there is a groundswell of activity now to stop Trump. Lindsey Graham, uh, perhaps the most humorous example, right? He said, I, I don't know whether I'd want to be shot or poisoned between t t Cruz and Trump, and now he goes for Cruz. Uh, but, but he's far from alone. Could any of this finally work and stop Trump? No, they're not going to be able to stop Trump. Lindsey Graham took the slow death rather than the fast death. <laughs> <laughs> he went with Rubio, <laughs> and Rubio got knocked out, and now he wants to go poison himself to death with Ted Cruz. Now, Rubio needs to go sit down. And, um, you know, Governor Nikki Haley, they said she's praying for Cruz now. I hope she doesn't pray the same prayer for Cruz that she prayed for Rubio, because that prayer didn't work. <laughs> so <laughs> ben, ben Ferguson. <laughs> They're not going to be able to stop the Trump train. <laughs> the Trump train is rolling along, and you roll with it or you get rolled over. Those are your options. All right, so so Ben, those have been the options so far yeah. for, for his rivals. But Lindsey, Lindsey Graham obviously did something he never wanted to do in coming out and backing Cruz. Uh, let me just play for everyone the moment, why this is so unexpected, what Graham said back in February and then what he said today. Here he is. If you kill Ted Cruz on the floor of the Senate <laughs> and the trial was in the Senate, nobody could convict you. I'm going to be doing a uh, fundraiser with and for Senator Cruz. I mean, Ben, are people really going to fall for this voters and say, OK, now Lindsey Graham says vote for the guy. I'm going to do it. Yeah, no, look, ultimately, the, there is something significant in what Marco Rubio did by saying that he's going to be supporting, uh, you know, basically anybody but Trump, because he actually still has supporters that, that were supporting him moving to these states. That is significant and will be significant, I think, for Ted Cruz. Outside of that, I just don't see many of these endorsements, especially Lindsey Graham, of all people, having a major impact. It, 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 and, and I think this is going to really come down to the issue of messaging. Ted Cruz, if he's able to come out there and connect with the voters, uh, this is a two-man race now. But Lindsey Graham doing this is not going to have a big impact. If it brings a few more voters to Ted Cruz's size, we'll happily take those. But ultimately, this is going to be a gut check moment. You can choose between Donald Trump uh, and you can choose between Ted Cruz. And which way do you want to go? And I think a lot of voters now are saying, all right. If I don't like Trump, I really need to get my, you know, get it together and focus on the long term of this. And is who's got the best chance of beating Hillary Clinton? Donald Trump is still down in the national head to head polls against Hillary Clinton. That's that fair. poll has been consistent for a very long time. And he's not closing that gap either. And that's why you see so many conservatives saying we got to get around Ted Cruz and we got to do it now. All right, so, so let me ask you, Dan, you know, the Stop Trump ideas out there uh, included a Kasich-Cruz ticket, because I know Ben wants to say it's a two-man race. John Kasich would say, uh, please do not speak so quickly because you are dead wrong. Um, but but would, would these ideas be harder for Democrats to beat than Donald Trump? Let's just take this Cruz-Kasich ticket. Would that be better or worse for Democrats than Donald Trump? Well, I think, either, like, this is a dream decision for Democrats. Like, Cruz or Trump, we would take either one of them. And I, look, I think ultimately the only way you're going to stop Donald Trump is a contested convention. There's almost no mathematical path for Ted Cruz to catch him, and he has zero chance of getting to a majority in the delegates. So the Republican Party has a decision. Are the party establishment, the delegates, going to upend the will of the voters and pick someone else, or are they going to stick with Trump? And that's a, that's a terrible choice. That's as bad as between being shot or poisoned, frankly. So, conversations <laughs> I never thought we'd be having in, in prime time. <laughs> Jeffrey Lord, uh, you know, Ben brings up Marco Rubio and what he had to say today that was so significant. Obviously, the first time he's spoken since dropping out. Let me just play one uh, quick thing uh, that Rubio said. Here it is again. Hopefully, it's, there's time to still, you know, prevent uh, a Trump nomination, which I think would fracture the party and be damaging to the conservative movement. So, Jeff, it has become now accepted by most people that a Trump win would, would, would break up the GOP. He says, no, not so fast. He could unify. Um, is, is, that, is that possible, really, or is that just in, insanity? And a Trump win is guaranteed to break up the GOP as we know it. I don't think it's guaranteed to, to, to break up the Republican Party. I, I have to say, I wrote a whole column last year. I went back and took a look at all the people who said that if Ronald Reagan were ever nominated by the Republican Party, it would break up the Republican Party. It would end it. 
it would be the death of the Republican Party. And I'm talking names like Gerald Ford, Nelson Rockefeller, Charles Percy, on and on and on and on this list goes. Here we are yet again. Basically what we have, just as we had before, is an outsider getting ready to win this presidential nomination, and the insiders don't like it. There's no surprise here. And, you know, it's an interesting and, and point you raised, Dan, because you tweeted two days ago, the next time Rubio campaigns, he will most likely be stumping for Trump in the fall. Do you think someone like Marco Rubio, who obviously now says anybody but Trump, will eventually get on board what Pastor Scott calls the Trump train? Yes, look, if Trump is the nominee, then people like Marco Rubio will be campaigning for him. And so I think that Rubio will do everything he can with his very limited influence and power to try to change the equation now. But if Trump's the nominee, everyone's, gonna, I believe, will get in line and help Trump win. Pastor Scott, do you I, I believe that? You think people are going to get they, in line? They have, they'll have no choice. They have to get in line. And he needs to get in line sooner, rather sooner than later, than simply sit somewhere crying sour grapes because he got smashed and destroyed he's and not, beaten so badly sour by going up head to head. Everybody that opposes Donald Trump head to head Pastor, gets Pastor, annihilated. Hillary Clinton will get annihilated. Pastor, 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 you go, Pastor. 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 will get annihilated too. And Ben, you know There's what, Ben? I used to think humility. you were all right. Hold on, hold on. Pastor there, Scott finished, then Ben's going to come in. All right. Let me say this. There's something called humility in the Bible. If Donald Trump wants to know why there are so many conservatives that are not going to actively support him if he got the nomination. It's because of the arrogance that you just displayed. Every ben, time you there's conservatives that start to kind of coalesce. Hold on, hold on, hold on, Pastor Scott, let Ben finish, let Ben finish. Every time that people can sort of start to start liking some of the things that Donald Trump may be saying, it's the arrogance of, of people like you that you better get on this train or you're going to get run over. It's not you look arrogant, like an idiot. It's, it's poison it's if you no pick brand, someone else. It's just but, okay. that, but that is it's the arrogance of the campaign. If you of a winning movement, you, need to, you might as well come on board rather sooner than later. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. It's not way. arrogance. I'll it's hit pause. Continue this and it's rhetoric. not a brag. I'll it's a matter of fact. I'll hit pause there. Well, we'll have to have you both back, all four of you back, of course. <laughs> Thank you very much.